Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Having been found guilty by a jury of your peers. I didn't see any jury. Well, they was around. Anyway, what difference does it make? You gunned down Wendy Jones, and he was one of our most beloved and respected citizens. I heard he was the town drunk. Well, now that he's dead, he's one of our most beloved and respected citizens. I don't care who he was, I didn't kill him. You've got the right to hear a few words from a preacher. Unfortunately, our preacher's out of town, but luckily, we got Farley Millard here, and he's a feed and grain salesman, and he owns a Bible. No, thanks. Now, what does that mean? I don't want any feed and grain salesman praying over me. I don't want anyone praying over me. I don't believe in that stuff. You ready, Max? I do, too. Look, you got one more inalienable right to speak a few last words, and I mean a few. <laughs> We don't want one of them things where the cam takes off with a declaration of independence. <laughs> well, go on. Well, I'd just like to say that this is the lousiest town that I've ever been in. Well, I've met a better class folk in a San Francisco opium parlor. Drunken pool hall bum would be considered too high tone for these parts. And as for your system of justice, well... well that's enough. You see what I mean? He was just one breath away from the Declaration. All right, Max. Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Ed Loose just confessed. He killed Wendy in a drunken barroom brawl about a pregnant Indian squaw. Ed claims Wendy was the father and that he was acting as the avenging angel. Wendy was going to be the father or something? That's what Ed says. All right. On time. Given his gun. Now, that's the way out of town, son. Take it, keep on going, and don't you never come back. You heard her. I'm not guilty. Even so, we don't want no fast guns in this town. Fast guns right alongside with lepers in this law-abiding community. Can I ride back to town long enough to get some food? That's the way out, son. Don't press your luck. Thanks. Bye. I'm going with you. You don't have to. I'll be back. When? Whatever you do, don't leave town. Wait. Never give up hope. See ya. I'd have known he was going to act like that, I never would have lied for him. Lied? What? You would have never what? I don't care. I thought he was cute. There ain't a man around here I'd have as a gift. And he took a bath every so often besides. After him! Oh. Oh.
Reverend Frank Fleming. Yeah, pleased to know you, Frank. Dear Reverend, everybody in Castle Walk is real excited about you coming here. We ain't had a preacher here in over three years. When our last one left in such a hurry, he didn't even say goodbye. He was a pious man, but he had a yellow streak down his back. We're all looking forward to meeting you for the first time. We're all looking forward to meeting you for the first time? Hmm. I don't know how long you'll be willing to stay, but you'll be welcome every minute of it. You the preacher's horse? Let's see what you got, pal. Frank, if ever I catch the guy who did you in, I'll take care of him for you. In the meantime, I'm gonna need your clothes and your horse. I got a posse after me for something I didn't do. I'd say a prayer for you, Frank, but coming from me, I'm afraid it's liable to do you more harm than good. Percy? Uh, sorry about that there, Parson, but uh, we're a little too far off to catch that there caller. Is there anything we can do for you, Reverend? Either of you boys ever heard of a town called Castle Walk? Why, yeah, it's in Arizona. Sure ain't much of a town, though. How far is it from here? Oh, about 150 miles. It's over yonder in that direction. How's your church attendance been lately, boys? <laughs> you boys see that branch over there? Uh, yes, sir. That was four for the Lord, boys. He loves you, but he hates your profession. Yeah, I can see how he would. 
I want you boys to go and sin no more. Uh, we surely won't, Parson. Uh, as soon as we can afford not to. Uh, preacher, you being so good with that gun and all, uh, how come you didn't just kill us as we was riding up here? Because you boys are children of the Lord, just as much as I am. <laughs> Lord, huh? Sorry, Sadie. Didn't have the time to dig it no deeper. Well, I guess we better just put him in the ground and get it over with. All right. Without even a few words? Mr. Ross didn't say nothing about no words. Said we could have a burying. Mr. Ross didn't say nothing about no words. Christian man, you can't just bury him like a wild dog. Can't we stand up to Mr. Ross just this once? You're leaving here after the burial. We gotta stay here and live with him. All right, let's get going. Wait a minute. Is it one of Mr. Ross men? Looks like a preacher. Well, what do we do now? And I wrote him myself not to come. Thank God you're here, Reverend. I've got many receptions in my life, ma'am. Yours is almost unique. We were going to have to bury my husband without any proper words being said. But now that you're here... You, the Reverend Frank Fleming? That's right. I wrote your letter telling you not to come. No, you wrote me a letter welcoming me to Castle Walk. I wrote you that letter. Uh, yeah, but things changed. First, Mr. Ross said it was all right for us to have a preacher, and then Mr. Ross changed his mind. Gentlemen, what the hell is going on here? Reverend! What did you say? Hell is the word that came straight from the Bible, folks. Now, all I know is we've got a heartbroken little widow here. You did say you were the widow? And these are my children. That's a child. She's 18. Oh, she certainly is. Well, first order of business as I see it is to get this poor man put decently into the ground. Oh, thank you, Reverend. Oh, I, I don't know what Mr. Ross is going to say about this. I haven't been here five minutes, and I'm already sick to death of Mr. Ross. Come on, let's bow our heads. Don't you have a Bible, Reverend? Oh, I probably do in my saddlebag. Here, you can borrow mine, Reverend. The deceased was probably a simple man, so I'll just say a few simple words of my own, not bother to dip into the Bible today. As you all know, it's ashes to ashes and dust to dust, which may not sound like the best deal in the world, but it's the only deal you're ever going to get, so you might as well learn to live with it. I didn't know the late deceased, but some of the works he left behind are mighty impressive. Well, what did he die of? He was shot in the back. May the full wrath of the Lord fall on people who shoot other people in the back. It's a rotten, sinful way to make a living. Amen. 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 
can't thank you enough, Reverend. I'd like to say more, but Mr. Ross only gave us half an hour to get out of town after the funeral. You're leaving town? You taking her with you? Mr. Ross said we all had to go. Who yeah. is this Mr. Ross? He's a mean, miserable, murdering thief, and he runs everybody in this part of the country. There ain't a soul of us that had a single, solitary, happy day since he rode in here and took over. He's going to hear every word that you said. Yeah, and he'll probably kill me. But at least I got to say something that should have been said before I died. Why is he running this woman out of town? My husband, Sam, was the only man in these parts to stand up to Mr. Ross. So he had Sam killed. He let us take one wagon load of our things. We'd better get started. Ma'am, the only place you're going is back to your ranch. I'm sure with the help of all these fine citizens that we can make Mr. Ross see the air of his ways. Reverend, you don't understand the situation around here. Mr. Ross is a powerful, powerful man. He's got money and influence. And he's got 20 top gunfighters working for him. Before I tell you people what I really think of you, I'm going to tell you something about gunfighters. Now, Ross doesn't have 20 top gunfighters working for him because there ain't 20 top gunfighters in the whole U.S. of A. Now, what Ross probably does have is about 15 cowboys that wear guns for ornaments. They do just fine at shooting up a saloon or making some terrified dude dance a little jig. Ross has probably got about three men who are pretty good at getting their guns out of their holsters, but no good at hitting anything once they do. Which leaves about two or three men that might honestly be called gunfighters, not top gunfighters. More like second or third raiders. So you see, you folks have been letting yourselves be rousted around by a bunch of two-bit yahoos. How come you know so much about gunfighters, Reverend? The Lord's work takes one to many places in many climes. Matthew 31. There ain't no Matthew 31. Well, there ought to be. Widow, I want you and your family to get in the wagon. I'm going to drive you home. You're going to sit next to me. Oh, I don't know, Reverend. Ma'am, you don't look like the kind of woman that would back away from a little fight. Where's your faith? My faith is in good shape, Reverend. And if you're willing to take the risk, so are we. Get in the wagon, kids. Us and the Reverend are going home. The lives of this family will be on your soul, Reverend. Oh, Reverend. Yeah. A couple of Ross's men are in town and they're pretty liquored up. That was their first mistake. You ride my horse, son. Okay. Go have some fun. Remember the children, Reverend. Those are just two of the cowboys, ma'am. Who? So where do you people think you're going? Where's the place that Ross would least like us to go? I'd say her ranch. Well, that's exactly where we're going. Wait till Mr. Ross hears about this. Mr. Ross is a skunk of doubtful parentage. Mr. Ross is so low, he could walk under a rattlesnake's belly wearing a high hat. And that's what I think of Mr. Ross without ever having met the man. Now, that was indecisive, cowboy. Could have very easily cost you your unimportant life. Those could have just as easily been your ears flying off your head, boys. Well, that's a terrible way for a preacher to act. The Lord 
want someone to move, he wants them to move. Don't talk about hell to a sinner, ma'am. <laughs> you a sinner? Yeah, we're all sinners. We're about to be. All right, kids, as soon as we stop, I want you to get the wagon unloaded. I want to get this family settled in before dark. You don't mind if I order your kids around a little, do you, ma'am? Reverend, you can do anything you want to. Reverend? Reverend? Oh, yes, ma'am. Reverend, this hole in the back of your coat, it looks like a bullet hole. <clears throat> well, uh, that'd be my guess, ma'am. You guess? How could a man be shot in the back and not know it? Well, I was carrying that coat over my arm when the shooting took place. <clears throat> well, tobacco's one of the Lord's works, too, ma'am. I'll get my things and fix your coat. Do you think Mr. Ross and his men are going to come down and get us tonight? No, not tonight, honey. I'd imagine that Sunday in church would be where he makes his first play. Aren't you scared at all? Oh, I'm scared, all right, Sally. But not the kind of scare that make me knuckle under to the likes of that Ross. Thought of a text for your sermon tomorrow, River? Tomorrow? Tomorrow's Sunday. I've lost all track of time the last few weeks. What do you think I ought to preach about? I thought you said the sin of cowardice. Yeah, that's not bad, either. Thought you probably had some favorite passage from the Bible to illustrate your point. Oh, I do. Several of them, as a matter of fact. But what's your favorite passage from the Bible that would illustrate that point, ma'am? I think it would be Luke 12. Christ says, do you think I have come to give peace on earth? I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would it were already kindled. It says that in the Bible? Well, I told you, Luke 12. Oh, Luke 12. <laughs> yeah, that Luke, he really knew how to turn a phrase, didn't he? Clean <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> your clothes up for the services. Well, I'd appreciate that. You don't happen to have a Bible around, do you? I, uh, seem to, uh, misplaced my glasses. Did you turn to that spot in Luke that your mother was talking about? It's right here. You don't wear glasses. No, something you're right. I don't know what got into me. Well, good night. you from uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34, although Luke says pretty much the same thing in his 12. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but I know what it means to me. It means that while God loves peace, when the occasion arises, He's not reluctant to use the sword. Matter of fact, when the occasion calls for it, he might become downright irritated if you don't use the sword, or the gun, or the rope. 
Now, whatever's handy. Now, you folks have had a cross to bear here lately, and his name is Ross. They say that people get the kind of lives they deserve, and I guess they do. But when men won't fight for their wives, women, and children, and when their women won't make them fight for what's right, then these people don't deserve any kind of lives at all. That's exactly what you've got. Get his gun. Ever done it? I don't think you could possibly realize what an awful thing it is to kill a man. I don't know who God must be mad at the most. That man for wasting his life at the order of some tin horn dictator. Me for having to do this thing in his own house. You people haven't quit before the fight even got started. I haven't got the heart for any more church today, that's all. Mr. Ross, a couple of these men are outside. Take care of yourself, son. Every second. Bring that body outside. You've had a couple of fun days here, preacher. Well, I tell you, Ross, you... The been... name is Mr. Ross. The name was Mr. Ross. Now, you hear me good, Ross. Either those two men go for their guns, I'm going to go for you first. I think I can take him, Mr. Ross. Don't think. Here's your chance, boys. Either you holding any grudges against him, draw on me, and I'll kill him for you. If we go together, we can get him. Before or after he kills me. You don't look all that fast to me. Shut up. Friend of yours, Ross? All right, preacher. You pulled yourself off a nice little grandstand play for the folks. Now I want you out of town. Who killed Sam Underwood? You were one of your men. I'm going to find out if I have to take the whole bunch of you to pieces. Give me the word. I'm sure I can beat him. Well, go on back to the ranch. I'll be there in a minute. You sure? Now. That's the way I like it. Man to man. Do I make the first player to you? I just changed my mind, preacher. I don't want you out of town. I want you right here where I can get you any time I want you. Service is next Sunday at 10 o'clock, and there's a four-bit fine for being late. <laughs> You wouldn't shoot me in the back, would you, preacher? Like that. <laughs> Any of you folks think your preacher doesn't deserve a drink after the events of this morning? Well, we just don't believe in the same God, that's all. Some of you boys plan him, will you? Don't you feel a little strange having a drink with your preacher on a Sunday morning? No. How come? You know, about 10 or 12 years ago, I took a trip up to Cheyenne. I come across this altercation between a 19-year-old kid and 
one of the top gunslingers in that part of the country at that time. This kid, he didn't want no part of the fight, but this gun, he was drunk. And he kept at it. And finally, the kid had to go for his gun or get blasted right there in his tracks. It was plum pitiful. How? This kid was the fastest thing I ever seen. Caught that gun, he flat foot. Why, he was dead before God got the news. I inquired around, found out this kid's name was Ernie Parson. Ernie, what are you doing here in Castle Walk, dressed up in that preacher's outfit? It's a wrong guess, Billy. You know, once you've seen a top man handle himself in a gunfight, you never forget one little detail. What do you want for, anyway? Doesn't matter. I didn't do it. They'll hang me just like I did if they catch me. Did you kill Frank Fleming? Oh, of course not. Came across his body in the hills, and he was already dead. I was half starved, no place to go, so I took his clothes and horse and came here. All right. I'll ride back to the ranch, tell the widow and the kids goodbye, and then I'll move on. Well, I leave. You're the answer to our prayers, Ernie. No, I'm not, Billy. Don't let these clothes fool you. God moves in mysterious ways, boy. Not that mysterious. Look, Billy, what I'd like to know is if I do stick around here, how much help can I count on from these God-fearing people? Almost none. Almost none? Uh, none. This is just God moving in his mysterious way to get me killed. <laughs> God will smite the sinners of Castle Walk just as surely as he smote the Philistines. Smoke. For the time is at hand when you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not afraid, for this must first take place. Nations will rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. Not a head on your hair, or a hair on your head will perish. And I quote Luke, chapter 21, verse... Luke, chapter 21, and verse 23. For there shall be great distress in the land, wrath upon his people. I brought you some lunch. I didn't know preachers had to practice. Well, it's either that or watch the collections fall off. Huh? Oh, that's that's a real bad joke, a stove in the Methodist. Oh. <laughs> Does your mother know you came out here alone? I don't know. Why? Well, uh, you're a very attractive young girl. Almost too young, as a matter of fact. Most of the girls around here are married by the time they're 13 or 14. 13, huh? Well, I'll have to look into that. Why? They're the lucky ones. Even if they don't get a trip to Phoenix out of it. Is that the price of marriage around here, a trip to Phoenix? No, but it sure doesn't hurt. Look, do I have to keep on calling you Reverend? Oh, no. Call me Ernie. Ernie? My full name's uh, Frank Ernest Fleming. All my good friends, they call me Ernie. Is there anything in your faith against marriage? No, not in my faith. Look, Sally, uh, sit down. This conversation isn't going in exactly the direction I planned. I mean, you know, marriage is just fine. I was real glad that my parents believed in it. But, uh, well, there's other things, too. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I know what you're talking about. What's the matter? Oh, it's these clothes and this collar. It's just, I'm not going to get anywhere dressed like this. I don't see that it makes much difference. Uh, you would if you were dressed like a nun. It's just the wrong outfit for what I had in mind. Hey, preacher! i got to talk to you! Hi, Sal. Hi. It's real important. Hey, 
You know a gunfighter named Jake McCoy? Yeah, I know of him. He's in town. My blessings on him. And he's working for Ross. Is he really good? Yeah, he's the best. You can take him, can't you? You sure he's working for Ross? Yeah, and he's looking for you. Although he don't know who you really are. Well, that doesn't matter. Or does it? Where's he at now? Well, he's at the Bent Saloon when I left town. You're gonna have to ride back to the ranch alone. We didn't get very much accomplished today, did we? Can't you just feel the ice breaking all around us? Parsons anymore? <clears throat> I've never run into Ernie Parsons. Any time, any place at all, ever. You have now. Church? In the hiding for the winter. Oh. I always heard you were kind of smart. I never heard that about you. Look, are we really going to have to go through with this thing? I got a thousand dollars in my pocket. And the girl waiting for me in Boulder City says I gotta go through with it. You all that sure you can beat me? You all that sure I can't? Anything I hate is a stupid, senseless fight. Come on. Flip a coin. When it hits the ground, we go for our guns, all right? All right. Jake? One of us is going to die, and it's not going to prove a thing. Sure it is, Ernie. It's going to prove which one of us is a fool to call himself a gunfighter. <laughs> Are 
Are you hit? You? Did you ever miss from this distance before? Never. Me neither. You want to try again? No. No, I think somebody's trying to tell us something. You put your gun away. I'm gonna get on my horse and get out of this place. I beat you, you know that, don't you? Oh, no, you didn't, and you know dang well you did, Jake. You gonna give Ross his thousand dollars back? No, I'm late for my date. Folks, see those bullets hit? I don't think it hit anywhere, Reverend. That's just plain silly. Hold on. This is how those stupid legends get started. Jake and I have an off day in a gunfight. Miss each other. I wish there could be a thousand explanations. Just because a bunch of rummies standing around don't see where the bullets hit, all of a sudden you've got the miracle of Castle Wall. Now this whole miserable little town's going to think that God's on their side. Well, you got me convinced, son. But somehow or other, I just don't hardly believe that you convinced yourself. Now let me point out a couple of things to you. Like what? Well, for instance, you're back yonder in that town and they're about to hang you. And right at the last minute, in rides this gal and saves your neck. She and I have been fooling around a little bit. All right. Well, then you're out there in the brush. Posses are chasing you. Then all of a sudden, you come across this here preacher's body. You find this letter that brings you right here to this here town. It's supposed to lead him. Yeah, but you was the one that wound up here. Right here where you're needed more than anybody's ever been needed before. All this make you want to stop and think just a little bit, boy? No. I don't want to talk about it. You should have listened to me when I told you to get out of town. You shouldn't have backed out in front of me the other morning, either. Now, this whole town's gonna have the idea that you're just a little less than the tin god you pretended to be. Just tell me one thing. What really happened between you and Jake McCoy? I chased that bum out of town. And he's not gonna give you your thousand dollars back, either. He said to tell you that's the price he charges for shaking hands of scum like you. Get on with it. Prayer man, you drop that rope real slow. Drop it. <laughs> you ain't getting out of town fast enough, preacher.
bunkhouse of our ranch. I thought it would scare the kids if they saw you like this. How about you find me? When you didn't come home last night, I set out to look for you. You stripped me down? I'm a ranch girl with brothers. Don't make a big thing out of it. You're something brand new in my life, Sally. Are you strong enough to get up and get dressed and get out of here? It doesn't matter whether I am or not. I've got to do it. Mm -hmm. you turn your back, Sal. I'm not as advanced in my thinking as you are. Will I ever see you again? Sure, why not? I'm not going far. We well, you have to. Well, then they don't get your body. Mr. Ross will never stop until they find you. Yeah, and this is the first place he'll look. I want you and the kids to go out and dig a grave. Put some kind of a marker on it with my name. Tell Ross you found my body and buried it in the hills. Can I turn around now? Sure. Sally, I don't want anyone to know that I'm alive. I want it to come as a horrible shock to Ross. I'm going to start giving him trouble in ways he never dreamed of. I'm going to need plenty of food, water, and ammunition. I'll get you everything you need. Where will you go? I'll hide out in the hills for a while. Well, Ernie, in this part of the country, if a girl undresses a man, it's customary for the man to make an honest woman out of her. I'm sure that's true in every part of the country. If I live through the next little while, we'll, we'll have a serious talk about that. What's the matter? Well, well, just look at the way I look. Well, it's always something, isn't it? You don't like the way you're dressed. You don't like the way you look. <laughs> There's a bunch of outlaws operating up in these hills. Probably scared old Chet and Harley half to death. Blew up the well, too. What do you mean? Dragging a preacher through the cactus. Them people don't have to stay dead unless they want to. Everybody in town keeps talking about the preacher's ghost to riding through the hills and shooting at every one of Ross's men that sticks his head up. I keep a telling them to hold dog on my idea. Go stick it. 
Sally. Didn't you tell Billy? You told me not to tell anyone. Billy, I'm sorry. It's sure good to see you alive, boy. Are you sure it's safe for you down here? I mean, it's been a long time since I've been safe anywhere. Lately, it's been getting worse. Isn't tomorrow Sunday? It sure is. Billy, I want you to ride into town and tell everyone that we're having church services tomorrow morning at 10. I'll do it right now. Sally told you our plans, ma'am? Yes. You have any objections? No. Ma'am, uh, has it occurred to you that well, Sally's liable to end up one of the youngest widows in these parts? Uh-uh. Mary Mert's only 14. She's been a widow two years. Besides Mary Mert? No, Grace Dorothy only been married a week and a half when her husband fell down a mine shaft. You know how old she is. <laughs> Sally, uh, could we take a walk outside? Yeah. Excuse us, ma'am. Sally, uh, the reason I brought you out here is, well, one of the reasons. If we're going to be husband and wife, then you've got a right to be in on the decisions that affect the both of us. You understand? Now, if I stay here and fight it out with Ross and his men, the chances are very good that I'll be killed. But on the other hand, we could leave here tonight, get married the very first town we come to, go someplace we both like and settle down and just have a wonderful life for ourselves. It's all up to you, Sally. You just say the word. Well, Mom always said never throw yourself in between a man and what he thinks he's got to do. Well, I won't kid you, Sally. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in that answer. Oh. No, no it, it's, it's all right. Uh, I got the strangest feeling that I've been pointed straight toward this shootout ever since the day I was born. There wasn't a thing in the world I could do about it. Billy says it's God moving in his mysterious way. Me? Well, I just don't know. You very religious, Sally? Why do men have to talk and talk? Can't you be quiet and get on with what you're supposed to be doing? Yes, ma'am. Folks, I'm here today as your preacher and as God's representative. Now, as your preacher, I've stood up to your enemies for you. And all that's gotten me so far is a lot of bruises and a bunch of cactus spines. Now, I understand that a lot of you thought I was dead, and that my ghost was raging through the hills, wreaking my vengeance on Ross and his men. But I want to ask you something. What were your feelings? Were you scared that you might have an angry ghost raging in your hills? Or were you ashamed because not a single one of you came out to see if I was alive or if I might not need some help? Well, I'm warning you people. While you're sitting around waiting for God and me to do your work for you, God just might have some plans of his own. Maybe he's not as angry at Ross as he is at you. I'm not armed. Billy, go outside. Take a look around. I came alone. Go on, Billy. I just thought it was time that all this foolishness came to an end. We got a new country to build here. We ought to be getting on with it. Instead of indulging in all this senseless killing. I won't deny that you've hurt me since you've been here. Several of my men have been killed or wounded. Several more have run off because you scared them half to death. I didn't know I was doing that well. What do you want, Ross? A truce. A chance to get on with our lives. Ross, if you were sitting on a stack of Bibles ten feet high, I'd bet money that you were lying and I'd win. Well, now, just a minute, Reverend. If Mr. Ross is sincere, and I believe he is, 
This may be just the moment we've been waiting for. Luther, how could you believe that? I don't believe him for a minute. Now, Sadie. You are going to believe this man after all he's done to you? Well, Gee, oh, so bad, Reverend. Anybody can make a mistake. If Mr. Ross is man enough to come here... Please, to come please, here. please. I didn't mean to create any dissension amongst the preacher's flock. Now, you've all heard what I have to say. Think it over. I think we ought to accept the proposition. Well, I think you're right. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Miss Sally Underwood and I are going to be married tomorrow morning at 11. You're all invited. The second the ceremony is over, my wife and I will be leaving this godforsaken town for good. The ceremony won't take place here in the church. It'll be at the Mint Saloon. Say what you want about those people at the Mint. But they know why they're there and they do something about it. feelings and I'm never wrong that I should get out of this place. Why do you say that? Huh? Oh, no. Hey, yonder she goes now. Oh, oh you're beautiful. Come on, everybody. Uh, don't you get the feeling that maybe something's missing here? I mean, who's going to perform the ceremony? You're the only preacher around here. Well, I don't know of any law that says I can't delegate my otherworldly powers. You marry us, Billy. Oh, yes, Billy. Well, I don't on. know about the legality of all this. Oh, never mind the legality. It's the spirit that counts. Well, now, I take Sally to be my wedded wife. You go on from there. Well, dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to unite this couple of holy... Reverend, you are right. Ross and his men have bypassed the town, and they're circling around, and they're coming in that way. Well, he's let us down again. Hold it down, hold it down. How many men? Uh, I counted uh, 14, including Ross. How long before they get here? Not more than five minutes. Well, five minutes is plenty of time. Go on with what you were saying, Billy. I'll have to get ready for Ross, otherwise I won't stand a chance. We'll have to finish this thing later. All right, folks, this is it. Now you see how much his word means. Ross and his men are coming into town for just one reason, to get me. Because he knows if he kills me, there won't be enough fight left in the rest of you to hold off a bunch of sick old ladies. This thing works two ways. Now, if I can get Ross first, then his men won't have any reason to go on with the fight. So all I'll need is some of you to keep his men pinned down while I take care of Ross. But the women and the children... You don't even have to come out in the open. You can shoot from the windows or from the roofs. You don't even have to hit anything. Just shoot fast and make a lot of noise, but keep his men pinned down. Well, you said we didn't have to hit anything, just make a lot of noise. Gosh, I don't think I'd take a chance with you, do you? Come on, Billy. Give me the keys to the hardware store. Barbershop. Now, I don't hate you people. I guess you just can't help the way you are. Well, I ain't gonna be that easy on you. Ernie, there's something else that you ought to know about. I'd have told you sooner, but... Well, I didn't want to spoil the wedding. 
Well, that sheriff that wanted to hang you, he's here in town. Where? Over at my place. I told him I was the sheriff here. It's one that I got off our last late sheriff. Anyhow, I told him if he'd wait there while I'd round you up and bring you into it. How'd he find it? Oh, him and that posse come across Frank Fleming's body. One of them old boys knew Frank. They figured that you'd switch clothes with him before. Well, if he wants me, he's just gonna have to get in line behind Ross and those other 13 men. You take the barber shop. Ernie, when this thing's over with, though, you gotta get out of town. That's all there is to it. Billy, what the hell makes you think we're gonna live through this thing? You all right? Barely. Listen, all you Ross's men. Ross is dead. Anyone who keeps on fighting is going to have to stand trial. How do we know he's dead? Because I'm alive. <laughs> all right. You heard the man. Sheriff. 
you're going to be down here to find out what this is all about. Yeah, I know. Billy, get my horse and meet me out back, huh? Go over to the Mint Saloon and tell Sally to meet me back at the ranch. We'll take off from there. No, I ain't going to do it. I'm a dang fool for going along with this thing as far as I have. I ain't going to go no further. What are you talking about? I ain't going to let you run away with that kid. Her not knowing who you are or what you are or what kind of a life she's letting herself in for. You think if I told her everything, she still wouldn't ride away with me? Well, of course she would, Ernie. Because she's 18 and, and you're her first love. Well, that's good enough for me. Ernie, when that sheriff finds out you've left town, do you suppose that he's just going to give up? I can take care of him. Yeah, you can take care of him with one hand, or you take care of Sally with the other. Then if something goes wrong, like she can just stand around with your baby in her and watch you hang. You think I could just ride off without telling her why? I'll tell her. Yeah, then what happens to her? Oh. She'll be tore up for a while, but, but she's young. She'll get over it in a month or two. Yeah, but I won't get over it in a month or two. I'll get your horse. I'll get it myself. Ernie? This town owes you a whole lot. But it don't owe you sad. Can't make any promises. Blessings on you, Well, Robert. thank you. Ernie, do I know you? No, I don't think so. And how come you know me? Because I know every preacher in this part of the country. And you're not one of them. And I've been hearing about a gunfighter named Ernie Parsons and some interesting goings on in a town called Castle Walk. Now, don't believe everything you hear, Reverend. Oh, I don't. That's why I'm on my way to Castle Walk right now. To investigate these wonderful stories. Well, maybe you should get them a real preacher now. They seem very happy with the one they had. They had a gunfighter, not a preacher. God moves in mysterious ways. You boys sure do hammer away at that phrase, don't you? <laughs> you really going to Castle Walk? I sure am. When you get there, uh, would you give these to a girl named Sally Underwood? Tell her they're just from an unknown admirer that thinks certain girls should have a trip to Phoenix, even if they don't get married. All right. Ernie, did you ever think that the things that happened to you in Castle Walk might be your call to the kind of work you've been destined to do? Reverend, uh, I didn't solve the problems of Castle Walk by praying them away. I did it the way I always do, with a gun. Now, did you ever hear of a call coming that way? But you left it a better place than it was when you arrived. You're a nice guy, Reverend. Uh, no, thanks. 
I'll be seeing you, Ernie. Mm-hmm.